Fedorov, uh, interesting stuff happening on that front because uh, Trump is about to announce his choice for, for the chairman of the Federal Reserve, a very powerful position, maybe the most powerful economic position uh, in the United States and possibly possibly the world. More, more powerful, I think, than the Treasury Secretary or the uh, chief economic advisor to the president. Um, and uh, we've got a number of different competitors for the role. Uh, we've got Janet Yellen, who is the current chairman of the Federal Reserve. We've got um, Jerome Powell, who's uh, one of the Fed governors, who's on the board that makes these kind of decisions already and has been there in a while. while. We've got Gary Cohen, who is uh, chief economic advisor to the president and was the front runner for this position until he criticized Trump. Gary, Gary, you can't criticize Trump if you want to advance in life. It's wrong. Look, Look at me, right? I criticize Trump and Anyway, you, you can't do it. You can't do it. Trump is a narcissist, and he does not tolerate criticism from anyone. Media, his own colleagues, his own friends, his anybody. You cannot criticize him, so you, you messed up. So I don't think Gary's going to get it. Kevin Walsh, who is a former Fed governor, he was a Fed governor under um, Bernanke, and he was there during the financial crisis and was responsible for everything the Fed did during the financial crisis. So, uh, so Kevin Walsh is another. And then I think the most interesting uh, possibility is, uh, is John Taylor. Uh, John Taylor is a Stanford economist, generally a free market guy. None of these other people I would call them free market guys. They were all either economic statists, they believe – the, the, the same central planning, or they are cronies. I, I would consider Walsh, Cohn, and Powell cronies. And I would consider Yellen, well, Yellen and Powell are, are clear statists. And John Taylor is the only one who's a free market guy. And this is why I truly believe John Taylor is not going to get the job. Now, it's not just that, and I'm going to get a little technical on you here. So, uh, but bear with me. Again, you listen to your own book show, not just to hear me yelling and inspiring, but also to get educated because you're not going to hear this stuff anywhere else. The Federal Reserve is the most powerful economic institution in the world. It basically controls the money supply of the United States. It prints the money. It determines interest rates. It determines the quantity of money in the economy and the interest rate charged on money, at least on the short-term rate, in the economy. It has massive ability to distort the U.S. economy, for example, by buying financial assets or selling financial assets. That's, by the way, how it expands or shrinks the amount of money in the economy. As most of you know, the Federal Reserve bought about $4.5 trillion, that's with a T, trillion, that's a thousand billion which is a million millions. So four million millions of uh, various financial instruments, primarily uh, uh, bonds and mortgage-backed securities. And by doing that, expanded, nominally expanded the money supply by four trillion. The funny thing is, at the same time, uh, those four trillion were put by the banks into reserve at the Fed. So really, in terms of circulating money- Andy. Not much really changed and not much really expanded. Anyway, the Fed has this incredible discretionary power. It doesn't really report to anybody. It's an independent institution, government institution. But, you know, you can impeach the Federal Reserve chairman. But other than that, he's pretty autonomous. Bernanke, almost all Fed chairmen have had since the Great Depression, since 1933, have had complete autonomy in terms of what they do. One minute. They weren't bound by any rules or by any standards or by any restrictions or by any constraints. And that's what, what one, two, three, four of the five nominees would like to continue. The, advantage, the, 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 the thing John Taylor is different, the way John Taylor is different, is he would like to constrain the Fed. He would like to constrain its ability to move interest rates to, to either print money 30. or extract money from the economy. Um, and that's what makes him interesting. So when we come back, we're going to talk more about what John Taylor wants to do about the Taylor rule, what these others would do, 
And what I would suggest in terms of the Fed, and maybe talk about the inherent inherent problem with the very existence Ten. of the Federal Reserve. All right, you're listening to your own book show on the Blaze Radio Network. We'll be back after these messages. On the Blaze Radio Network. The Yaron Brook Show. All right, this is uh, Yaron Brook. We're talking about the Federal Reserve and. Uh, you know, Trump is going to have to make a choice here about nominating a new Fed chairman. Now, if I had to guess right now, this is my prediction. You can call me on it. But my prediction is he's going to go with Yellen. Why Yellen? Because he knows her. Uh, he doesn't want anybody new who might stand up to him, God forbid, who might criticize him, God forbid. Um, so he's going to go with the known quantity. Yellen's a known quantity. I also think Donald Trump is a real estate guy. He wants low interest rates. He doesn't really care about much, and his understanding in economics is superficial at best. It, 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 it's, it's very bad. And Yellen's going to keep, she's a dove, she's going to keep interest rates low for as long as you can. He might go with somebody like Jerome Powell or Gary Cohen, who are going to do the same thing. I'm, I'm pretty sure he won't go with Kevin Walsh. Kevin Walsh is too much of a, of a loose cannon, I think, and, and too much of a Republican. And, you know, Yellen, uh, Powell... Cohen, all Democrats, I, I think that's where um, Donald Trump's heart really is. It's in the Democratic Party when it comes to economic issues. And I, and I suspect he's going to go with one of them. Easiest, safest appointment would be to appoint Janet Yellen. I, if I could influence the decision, which again, I would love to see John Taylor in the role because John Taylor has a view somewhat, at least to some extent, of limited government and also of limiting the power of the Fed and limiting the power of the Fed in terms of its discretion, in terms of what it does. So he would have a rule, an equation, if you will. I'm not a huge fan of, of the rule, but better than nothing. Um, a, a rule that, that is predictable, that the markets know about how monetary policy would, would uh, move over time. And it would not be at the discretion of some bunch of economists who come up with some bunch of economic theories. And, and uh, it would be one equation, basically. And the markets would know. And they would adjust. And while I think it's far, far from optimal, it's, it's better. He, 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 now, would John Taylor stick to the Taylor rule if he got into power? Unfortunately, I think he wouldn't. Uh, I mean, this is the problem with the Federal Reserve. It's a political institution. And they always succumb to political pressure. So this is my bottom line. The only solution to Federal Reserve is to do away with it. I, I think the Federal Reserve is a horrible institution. I would like to do away with it. And I would like to uh, do away with the government having any control over money or interest rates. I'd like to pass that responsibility over to the public, uh, private sector. I'd like to give banks the responsibility of issuing currency based on some reserve that they have, like gold. And then interest rates would be determined purely by the market. There would be no, no government set interest rates. Think about it this way. Um, central planning doesn't work. When government sets prices, you either have, they either set them too high or too low. The only proper price is a market price. It's the price where supply and demand clear. It's the price that integrates our values, what we care about. Imagine if the government set the price of an iPhone. I mean, it would completely distort the whole supply chain of the iPhone and destroy Apple. And, and either make the iPhone too expensive, which is what it would probably do, or it would make it so cheap, Apple would stop producing it. So we'd either have shortages or surpluses, because if it was too expensive, nobody would want to buy it. No, we know this doesn't work because the Soviet Union experiment and prices of bread and what you had is shortages and surpluses, and it was a, just a disaster. Every time, price controls by the government, uh, Nixon tried this in the 70s. Every time government tries to impose price controls, it messes it up. It screws it up completely. But we take the most important price in the entire economy. By the way, the most important price in the entire economy is interest rates because every economic decision 
relies on some estimate, on some projection of interest rates. Everything. Every, every product you have out there is impacted. Its value is impacted by interest rates in the economy. So we take interest rates, the most important price in the entire economy. And we centrally plan that. We let the government determine that through the Federal Reserve. We take money, maybe the most important product in the entire economy, because we use it to purchase every other product. We use it to save. We use it to invest. And we give the government a monopoly over its distribution, over its creation and distribution. And how ridiculous is that? We don't believe in government monopolies. Well, I guess we do. We have a government basically monopoly over education. We're working towards a government monopoly over health care. They still have first-class mail. They have a monopoly over. We can never destroy government monopolies, it seems. But they don't work. And they certainly don't work when it comes to money and interest rates. All they do is distort and destroy the economy. So nobody, not John Taylor, not Alan Greenspan, not Ben Bernanke, not Janet Yellen, can determine the right interest rates. Only markets can do that. And in trying to do it, all they do is set us up for failure. Alan Greenspan's interest rate policy set us up for the Great Recession. Interest rate policy during the 1920s set us up for the Great Depression. Interest rates during the 1930s set up the continuation of the Great Depression. The Federal Reserve has been an unmitigated disaster since its founding. And, and there's a lot more I could say about this, but we are a little short in time here. So I'll just say this. It doesn't, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter who Trump, but I think it'll tell us a lot about Trump's personality. If, if uh, he appoints um, John Taylor... That would, you know, that would be one of the better things he's done if he does that, just because I think John Taylor could be more independent. But he'll probably appoint some lackey, um, Cohen, Powell, or Yellen. Uh, and that'll tell you a lot about Donald Trump. That'll tell you a lot about, not that you need to know a lot more about Donald Trump. I think we already know all we need to know about him.